In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts to help us answer a question that's relevant to almost every investor. Are stocks poised to significantly outperform bonds and gold? Near the end of last week's video, we said basically, we're not trying to make the bearish case. We're not trying to make the bullish case. We're making the case for what we have right now, which at that time was mixed probabilities. If we fast forward a week, the concepts shown on the screen here have been extremely helpful. We've been covering the 10-2 yield curve for well over a year now, and our message has been very consistent. And now that the 10-2 curve is inverted, our message is not going to change in any shape, form, or fashion. Typically, from a historical perspective, inversion is a very long-term and early signal. As we've covered in the past, for example, first sign of inversion, 10-2 yield curve, financial crisis bear market. It occurred 651 calendar days before the S&P 500 peaked in October of 2007. Similar situation, first sign of yield curve inversion occurred in 1998 before the dot-com bust bear market. Did the market tank within days of inversion? No, it took 668 calendar days after the first sign of inversion for the S&P 500 to reach the major peak on March 24th of 2000. In the two anecdotal cases that we just covered, the average number of calendar days after the first sign of 10-2 inversion to the peak in the S&P 500 was 660 days. The average gain between the first sign of inversion and the major market peak was 32.09%. From a Yahoo Finance article, Tony Dwyer expands it. The last three cycles that have similarly been fueled by excessive use of leverage. Following initial inversion, rallies, median of 34%, 22 months, a recession was 24 months away. 2019 case, obviously to be determined. This is the look of our moving average cluster here. Close August 26th. We still have somewhat of a mixed and indecisive look here. But it's pretty fair to say we look a lot more like these bullish examples. And from a longer term perspective and from a trend strength perspective, we really haven't taken on any of these negative characteristics yet. If price were to move down into this area, obviously that could start to change. So now that the 10-2 curve is inverted, what are we going to focus on relative to this issue? The same thing that we always focus on, the facts in hand. Credit spreads have actually improved in recent weeks. 4.48 on June 5th. 4.42 on June 6th, fast forward to this week, August 28th. They haven't widened, they've narrowed to 4.17. 4.17 on August 28th really doesn't look anything like these concerning periods that we've covered in the past. As shown here, credit spreads can widen quickly, speaks to flexibility, but that has not happened yet. You can pause your video player if you want to look at this chart or you can find it in our Twitter feed. But basically, the chase for yield ends when concerns about the economy and the threat of increasing default rates start to rise. That's exactly what happened in the 2007-2008 case. Nobody was chasing yield despite the fact that 10-year yields, treasury yields, were plummeting. Unlike the present day, high yield bond prices also fell. Why? There were increasing fears about the economy and increasing fears about the potential for bond defaults. In the present day, the high yield market doesn't look anything like this here. That may change, but it hasn't changed yet. Similar theme relative to initial jobless claims. We don't want to see a quick spike in claims. We didn't get that this week. Four week moving average for claims actually down a tad. And nothing like this yet. It may happen soon, but it hasn't happened yet. 
How about national financial conditions? Are we anywhere near these numbers up here that we've covered in the past? The answer is no. We're still down here at negative 0.75. We ticked up a little bit relative to previous weeks, but nothing overly concerning relative to these numbers we've covered in past videos. Many of these breath charts that we're covering do not update until the evening. Thus, we are covering charts as of Thursday's close on August 29th. NYSE AD line weekly. Here's the low in the S&P 500. It held nothing alarming here. If it morphs into something like this or this, S&P 500, S&P 500, our concerns would increase. Similar situation here, NYSE common stock only advanced decline line. This is the look that we can tolerate. This is the scarier look, October through December, S&P 500 here. Thus far, we look more like this constructive period here than this concerning period here. This is the weekly version of the chart. Very, very similar situation with the daily version. This is where we held when the S&P 500 bottomed. Thus far, nothing shocking or surprising. NASDAQ AD volume weekly stays above the center line on the Bollinger Band. The S&P 500 writes itself. This is the ugly look we want to avoid. Here's the low in May. This is the look we want to embrace. And thus far, as of Thursday's close, this still looks constructive from a probability perspective. As we go through the charts this week, we have to think of the context a week ago from Twitter. As of the close last Friday, the Bears had some outstanding setups. And as of Thursday evening, they've really done nothing with them thus far. It's very, very possible relative to where we were last week that instead of looking like this, we could look more like this. This is the evidence that we have in hand. Again, we're gonna be moving very, very quickly. NASDAQ, monthly, tape index. Here, S&P 500 bottoms. Here, the tape index holds S&P 500 bottoms in 2016. Right now, we're trying to make a stand in a similar area. This is the look we would want to avoid this is the look we would want to avoid. That may happen, it hasn't happened yet. Exact same concepts. Why are we covering so many charts? We use a weight of the evidence approach. These are the constructive looks here. NASDAQ Technical Index, weekly. S&P 500 holds, holds, holds. Constructive, holds earlier this year. Right now, we look more like the constructive periods we don't really look anything like this yet. Continue to take it day by day. Similar situation here. We're looking at a rate of change version of the same indicator now. Indicator holds here. S&P holds. Good things happen. Indicator holds. Holds. Good things happen. Good things happen. Good things happen. So far... We're still in the good things happen range and we haven't morphed into something more concerning like this or this over here. Continue to take it day by day. NYSE AD volume monthly, bottom in 2009, S&P 500, holds here, lows in 2016, held at the same basic area from a trend perspective in December of this year. Thus far, we don't have anything that looks concerning like this look here, this look here, this look here, or this look here even. This is a monthly version, similar concepts with the daily version. Constructive held here, S&P held. Bottom here, S&P holds in June. Present day here. Cross above the center line. Looks similar to that and that. Doesn't really look anything like these concerning periods here and here where the S&P 500 dropped. How about the NASDAQ? Very, very similar story from a breath perspective. Breath indicator holds. S&P 500 holds. Good things happen. 
Breath indicator holds in the same basic area. Good things happen. Trying to make a stand in the same basic area. This chart and every single chart that we'll talk about in this week's video, it cannot predict the future. It simply helps us with the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. We'll learn something either way. This is the look of the indicator on Wednesday night when we're preparing for Thursday's session. And we did get a bounce at a good level on Thursday. Another breath indicator, MYSC. Stocks above their 200-day exponential moving average. Very, very similar themes thus far holding in a constructive area. We don't look like this yet. We don't look like this yet. S&P above 200-day exponential moving average. Hold, hold. Stock market holds twice in 2016. Hold. Here's the low. January, February, March 2018. This is the low in the S&P 500 in June we held here. Thus far, we're hanging around in the right neighborhood. For the most part, everything that we just said about the previous chart applies to the NASDAQ. Stocks above their 50-day exponential moving average. Wednesday's look told us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. Fast forward to Thursday and we did get a little bit of a pop. Wednesday, S&P 500 greater than the 50-day exponential moving average. Here's the low after the plunge in January, February 2018. We make a low, a higher low, a higher low. Have a similar look here on Wednesday of this week. If we fast forward to Thursday, you can see we did get a move in the direction that we want to see. All things being equal, we'd prefer to be up here and avoid a look like this down here or a sustained visit like this or this. Thursday, breath momentum oscillator, S&P 500. One example of it holding and the S&P doing well. So far, it looks constructive. NYSE summation index trying to turn back up. Printing bottom fissure indicator. Somewhat interesting. Once it drops below negative 11 and then turns back up, the probability of a bottoming process increases. You get somewhat of a confirmation when it turns up and crosses the 10 day moving average as it did the close Wednesday. If we fast forward to Thursday, you can see it improved even more. Did the signal work every time here? Absolutely positively no, because we know there is no signal that works every time. Here you get what appears to be a bullish signal and bad things happened. This look here, similar to this look here, 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 and here, simply speaks to odds. Senior loan ETF, resistance here, S&P 500 peaks. Resistance in the trend channel, S&P 500 drops. Support in the trend channel, S&P 500 finds a bottom. It appears that we tried to make a bounce here and we're moving in the right direction, similar to this. Not out of the woods yet here. S&P 500 bullish percent index. Does the present day look more like these two constructive periods in 2016 or these concerning periods here, 2015, this concerning look here, early 2018, and this more concerning look here in early October of 2018? The answer is easy. Present day looks more like this today. We'll learn something either way. NASDAQ Composite Daily RSI closed above 50 here, close above 50 here. Price closes above the center line on the Bollinger Band. Today we closed above the center line on the Bollinger Band. The bottom Bollinger Band is turning up. That's all good from a probability perspective. RSI clears, clears price. From a keep an open mind perspective, there's a lot of white space here. Wouldn't be shocking if the NASDAQ came down to this line 
here will learn something either way. This is a daily chart of the NASDAQ. This is a weekly chart of the NASDAQ. Trying to close above the center line. That doesn't look like this concerning look here, nor this concerning look here. You can make an argument that the global Dow is in an area of potential support from numerous sources. Outcome to be determined. But this look definitely tells us to keep an open mind about a move in this direction. The bank ETF on Wednesday here. Fast forward to Thursday trying to make a stand. It's also possible it could come down to this line here. Learn something either way. This look here somewhat similar to this look here where the S&P 500 bottomed. And this look here really doesn't look anything like this look here where the S&P 500 peaked or this look here where the S&P 500 peaked. All forms of support are potential or possible support. Back to the breath themes. Does the present day look like the constructive periods in 2016 where the S&P 500 held? Or does it look more like this concerning period in Q4 of 2008 when Mr. Powell said we're nowhere near neutral? The answer is simple. Present day still looks like the constructive periods. Exact same questions, exact same answer. Thursday, August 29th, 2019, very, very similar questions. Does the present day look more like this constructive period here where the S&P 500 made a bottom in June? Or does it look more like this concerning period here below the center line with the center line rolling over and hitting the lower Bollinger Band? We don't have any of that here. Present day looks more like this relative to this. Very, very similar concepts here. These are things we want to avoid. 2007, upper Bollinger Band rolls over. White space between the indicator and the Bollinger Band crosses below the center line, the center line rolls over, drops below the moving average, hits the lower Bollinger Band. All of it speaks to negative probabilities. Similar situation here. S&P does not do well. S&P does not do well. Drop below here, white space here. Bad things happen. Present day really doesn't look anything like those concerning looks covered this chart in recent videos. Does the present day look much different than these corrections here in 2016? The answer is no. This is still a relatively good looking chart. Similar situation. This whole correction thus far as of Thursday's close on August 29th has taken place above the 50 week moving average. That is in stark contrast to this period here or this period here, and in stark contrast to this period here. Notice this consolidation is taking place basically on the 50 week. Not the case here thus far. Notice here, 2018, the moving average cluster is rolling over, 200 day rolling over here, and we're consolidating. Instead of consolidating below a downward sloping cluster, we're consolidating around, above, and below an upward sloping cluster. Instead of consolidating maybe, let's say, 65%, 70% of the time below a downward sloping 200-day, we're consolidating thus far 100% of the time above an upward sloping 200-day. doesn't predict the future. It simply speaks to probabilities at this point, relative to somewhere in here. Haven't seen anything particularly shocking here. The bears did not take advantage of the setups as of Thursday's close. We'll see what Friday brings. Door is still open to downside if the market chooses to take that path. S&P 500 daily, Thursday's close, above the center line above the center line here in June, above the center line here in early January of this year. RSI above 50, RSI above 50. Today we closed above 50. Rate of change trying to recapture the zero line here. 
This also says we could easily move down to 2825-ish before moving higher. But in the last two instances, when we made a fairly clear break above the center line, we held it. That's to be determined. This is a weekly version of the chart. Very, very similar themes on Thursday. Above RSI 50, rate of change thus far holding above zero, which is quite a bit different than early October of last year. But the door is still open here and here if the bears can gain control of the tape over the next few days or weeks. This is potential support if that happens, and this is potential support. Anything particularly abnormal yet from a FIB perspective? The answer is no. We're holding above the 38.2% retracement thus far relative to this A to B move. This is an updated version of the chart that we tweeted here during the session on Monday, August 5th. And thus far, somewhat surprisingly, the market has held in this area here that featured numerous gaps up and down in the past. It's possible this is our support line. It's possible this is our support line. And it's possible neither of them act as support and we're moving in this direction. Right now, this is a constructive look with the magnet somewhat saying the white space is above here. Or at a minimum, the ratio of white space above is greater than the ratio of white space below. Hence, the scale in thought. If you scale in here, your risk reward is still pretty good, even if you come back down here and then go higher. Not assuming anything, just looking at the odds that we have in front of us today. This is a broader S&P 500 index. Instead of 500, it's 1,500. Advanced decline percent weekly. Here is the look that we want to avoid in here. Present day really doesn't look anything like that. It looks more like the constructive period where good things happened. This is 10-year yields. Yields fall when bond prices go up. So when yields are majorly oversold, that means bonds are majorly overbought. Weekly chart as of a close on August 23rd. Only three times dating back to 1962 have we seen such an oversold reading on weekly RSI? What's happened in the past in both the stock and bond markets when the bond boat has gotten very, very crowded, arguably overcrowded? This is only the third time it's happened, thus we have a very, very small sample size. But common sense tells us if this is a majorly overbought and rare condition in the bond market, the odds probably say bonds are going to lose money. And that's exactly what happened in these cases. If we walked forward from this point here and this point here, which is similar to August of 2019, this is the performance in the S&P 500. One year out, average and median gains roughly 30%. Really not that much different looking out two years, but still very, very favorable. But more importantly, on a relative basis, stocks in these two anecdotal cases crushed bonds. And that is not surprising at all. If this market is majorly and rarely overbought, that typically aligns with fear, typically aligns with stocks underperforming. And when that rare condition is cleared, RSI goes in the other direction. RSI goes in the other direction. Is it possible we have more of a, let's say, 2007, 2008 case? The answer is absolutely positively yes, but we didn't get a reading like that in 2007 and 2008. And this shows you why it's very, very difficult to over allocate or diversify into bonds heavily at this point, because while bonds are considered safe, when we get readings like this and this, bonds can actually be quite a bit more risky than the stock market. Obviously, the 2019 case is to be determined. Keep in mind with the small sample size, we did not pick this. We're showing you the entire data set. 
These are the only two cases that are similar to the present day. And if that concerns you, you can pause your video player and read this little blurb here. This is 10-year yields weekly. It's a daily version of the chart. Yields way down here in 2012. This is your breath thrust low, similar to January, February this year. This is a correction here. Yields come down. Eventually, really good things happen in the stock market and not so good things happen in the bond market. We've talked about the 2016 case. Here's your breath thrust. Here's a pullback. Here's Brexit with a lot of fear. The bond boat is overloaded to one side. After this, eventually really good things happen in the stock market and really bad things happen in the bond market. Present day case to be determined. Value line geometric index has been weak. Is there any reason to believe it may be near a point of support and a bounce? What once acted as resistance, what once acted as resistance, what once acted as resistance may now act as support, intersecting with potential support. Potential support simply speaks to probabilities. A reversal here would align with the reversal like this in bonds, a reversal like this in bonds, setup is similar to here, and a reversal here would align with a reversal like this in the stock market or a reversal like this in the stock market. All to be determined. It's extremely important to note, we didn't cherry pick these cases. These cases look similar to the present day. We didn't cherry pick these cases. The market picked these cases. We're simply identifying them, trying to find out in the past what happened next. And this is what happened next. It seems to align with common sense and human greed and fear. Remember we said this look here, similar to this one and this one, tells us why it's difficult to diversify heavily into bonds at this time because they might be risky. A similar situation in the gold market. Resistance here. We're at that same point now. If we got overly aggressive with our gold positions, this is what could happen. Or this. Not predicting that, but would prefer to see what happens here before adding to those stakes. This chart here is one of the reasons why we have gold positions. And this chart here on August 28th looks constructive relative to the stock market. If we can clear here, then we may see more of this, all to be determined. Here's another example of why it's difficult when things have been going poorly over the past few weeks to get aggressive with gold. How can that be? On Wednesday, you can see prices above this line here. This would be step three, a higher high relative to the three steps for a probabilistic trend change. On Wednesday, this looks good. On Thursday, this looks somewhat like this, and this looks somewhat like this. In this case, if I loaded up on gold here, sold all my stocks, I would have been very, very disappointed for quite some time in here. Thus, we'd like to see what happens here one way or another. We're not anti-gold here. We make decisions based on facts. Another reason to go slow relative to scaling into our gold stake. The daily chart here also has potential resistance and we have not cleared this high here yet on a relative basis. If we got overly aggressive with gold here in 2016, we would have been disappointed. Overly aggressive here, we would have been disappointed. Overly aggressive here, we would have been severely disappointed. Would have been disappointed, would have been disappointed. Well, now we're seeing the intersection of the disappointment lines. So we want to see what happens near the disappointment lines, whether it's a disappointment or a bullish breakout. I have no opinion whatsoever what's going to happen here. The market will make that call. Happy to add to our gold. Happy to sit tight with what we have for now. Here's another chart that says why we have to be careful loading up on government bonds here. 
government bonds relative to SPY. Resistance in the ratio here, the S&P 500 reverses and does very well. The ratio drops like a stone. Would have been very, very easy to overload in bonds here on February 8th, 2016. Resistance bonds started to underperform significantly and the stock market bottomed here and did very well. Similar situation here, resistance, S&P, same general area here, we get a bottom. Long story short, we just wanna see what happens here. Happy to add to our bonds if we go in this direction. Happy to sit tight with what we have if we morph into a look like this or this or this, the market will make that call. As of Wednesday's close, August 28th, Treasury's underperforming SPY by 1%. Fast forward one day and it goes to 2.46%, meaning this line has moved in this direction. No predictions here, we'll just see what happens. Everything that we just said really applies to this chart here weekly as well. Resistance for the ratio, potential resistance for the ratio. Here's where the S&P 500 bottomed. We'll wait and see what happens to make any further allocation decisions. Here's the look of the chart on Wednesday. Here is the look on Thursday. This looks like this. Obviously, this look could get erased on Friday and we could get a breakout. So we'll just see what happens. Right now, this is telling us to be patient with bonds and to keep an open mind about good things happening in the stock market. Very, very similar situation here. Resistance for the ratio, bonds underperform S&P bottoms. Resistance for the ratio here, bonds underperform significantly S&P 500 bottoms. We're in the same basic neighborhood today. We'll learn something either way. You can see we could be at a possible inflection point. It's possible that defensive assets break out and crush stocks. It's also possible that defensive assets are about to hit resistance and stocks will outperform. Hence, the need for patience and maximum flexibility. Similar situation here. We've got a trend channel, support here, Tech starts to outperform. Looks like we're trying to turn in a similar area here. This happens as the S&P 500 is bottoming in June. Once again, we'll learn something either way. If good things are to happen, we want this ratio to look like this. This is the look on Wednesday, August 28th. If we fast forward one day, it does look like we're trying to get a bounce like this that would be constructive for tech and really against bonds. This is Thursday. We all know that on Friday, we may be down here. Similar situation here, monthly S&P 500 gold ratio, support in favor of stocks, support in favor of stocks near the same level of possible support. If we moved in this direction in a convincing manner, we would wanna to add to our gold positions over the next few days or weeks. If we bounce like this, we would prefer to sit tight with our gold in the short run and potentially add to our equity positions. You can see when the S&P 500 peaks here before really bad things happen, this is the look of the ratio. The present day really doesn't look anything like that. It looks like where the S&P 500 bottomed or a period here where it rallied. This is a long period of time. This is all of 2014 and the S&P doesn't really peak until May of 2015. Kind of flipping the script here. Now we're looking at SPY relative to IEF type of look we want to avoid, type of look we want to embrace. Wednesday, stock bulls want it to look like this. Thursday, it does look more like this. Friday is the important day because that will nail down the chart. We'll learn something either way. We own IEF and we own basically SPY. 
Don't have a strong preference, just want to get it right. It's a monthly version of SPYIEF. Support for stocks, support for stocks, support for stocks, support for stocks. We'll see what happens. Weekly version. Ratio holds, stocks do well. Ratio holds, stocks do well. Ratio in the same basic area. We'll see what happens. This is the look of the ratio on Wednesday, and this is the look on Thursday. SPYTLT monthly support, support, the line's up here now. Basically resistance, resistance, we're in the same general area. During this bull run here, once we recaptured the 50-month moving average, for the most part, when we've had trouble, we've held in that area. We're back to the 50-month moving average. Is it possible that this is going to morph into this? Absolutely, positively, yes. Not trying to predict anything. If this morphs into something like this, then we'll learn a lot. This is early 2008. This chart here is a mixed bag. This is not a settled issue yet. If the ratio gets down in this area, it's going to favor bonds. If we hold as we did here, it will favor stocks. A lot of different ways to look at this. This is an issue that is not settled yet. We could be breaking out or we could be getting resistance resistance. This is 2012. This is 2016. S&P 500 bottoms here after roughly a 10% correction. And the S&P 500 bottoms two times in 2016. The February low, and this is roughly Brexit in here. If we're on a 2008 type track, we should move sharply in this direction. Similar way of looking at it, now we're looking at stocks versus a diversified basket of bonds. Think like AGG in the ETF world. Near the pink line, the S&P 500 has tended to make a stand. We're near the same pink line now. Could this morph into something like this in 2008? It could. That's why we want to try to see what's going to happen. It's a mutual fund version here. If you look closely, you can see price is down below the red line here on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're back above the red line and above an upward sloping 50 month. This is telling us right now, we could morph into a look like this where we want to own stocks and we really don't want to load up on bonds, or we could morph into a look like this where it's absolutely the polar opposite. We don't want to be anywhere near stocks, and we want to add to our bonds aggressively. The market will make that call. Right now, this is an uptrend that appears to be intact, and right now, this appears to be a bullish breakout that's retesting this level here. A bullish breakout can fail. S&P 500, this is tech versus TLT, RSI down here, S&P 500 makes a stand, RSI, S&P makes a stand, RSI trying to make a stand. Here's the look of the chart on Wednesday. If you're a bull, you want it to move in this direction. Here's the same chart on Thursday. We'll learn something either way. There's so a lot of different ways to look at the risk management cat. Remember, weight of the evidence helps us with confidence. If the charts are all saying the same thing, it's very, very easy to move and move rapidly. As of the close on August 29th, right now, this chart looks like this is acting as potential resistance. That absolutely positively could change. There's also good things happening on this chart relative to gold, and that's why we own gold and tech stocks. This will help us decide where we want to allocate our resources going forward and how we want to weight our pie chart. Remember we talked about AGG before? Bonds really haven't done anything too impressive yet. They're below a downward sloping 50-month moving average. That's in stark contrast to the early stages of the bear market where we're above the 50 month and then it turns up. 
the housing market can also help us with long lead times. So when housing sales start to drop, the probability of a recession increases. Right now, home builders look like they're trying to break out. Here's a breakout here that occurred after the low in 2009. Here's a breakout that occurred here. This is your breath thrust in the S&P 500. And in here, this is our roughly 10% correction in the S&P 500. You can make an argument that this breakout here and this breakout here and this breakout here, this is your breath thrust back here. This is post-election is similar to this breakout here and now we're even trying to break above this level. We're still above an upward sloping 50 month moving average, which is not the case in here. If you wanna know what Warren Buffett thinks about the market or what his methods would say about the present day market, one of the best ways is to see what his lieutenants are doing. And you can do that if you pause your video player and read this Yahoo Finance blurb here. The 10-2 yield curve has inverted. It's pretty much off our radar now. It's the first sign of inversion that matters in our analysis. So we'll shift our focus to the facts in hand that still look relatively constructive, but we've got an indecisive look here that could easily move into this area here. We absolutely positively don't have anything in the key financial and fundamental data right now that says we should be sprinting for the exits. Credit spreads are still relatively tame, respecting that they can spike quickly. Still demand for high yield bonds. Haven't seen any spike in the employment data that would spook us. Much like credit spreads, this can change quickly. It hasn't changed yet. Remember when we did this, this is the average and median read on the Chicago Fed National Financial Conditions Index before the S&P 500 fell roughly 35 to 40%. The present day reading, negative 0.75, doesn't look anything like this, and it doesn't look anything like this. This too can move relatively quickly. So we'll be keeping an extremely close eye on it. We have no idea if we're going to follow the historical script. We do know what history tells us. We have shown so many things in the past few months that say the present day looks similar to this period here. Market needs to consolidate its gains. It goes sideways for a long period of time. Harder markets eventually were followed by easier markets. No question, this has been a harder market in here. If we follow the 10-2 yield curve script, and why would we do that? Because we just had inversion. And if we follow the historical, the bond boat is extremely crowded script, and it tells us good things could still happen in the stock market. And these type of numbers align with what the yield curve history tells us. And it also tells us that we need to be very, very careful about quote unquote defensive bonds right now. If defensive assets can break out, if defensive assets can break out, then we're probably looking at an S&P 500 that moves in this direction. And the yield curve, something that just happened, and the crowded bond boat, something that just happened, those analogies tell us to keep an open mind about much better than expected outcomes for one to two years. So the game plan would be, if we are fortunate enough to move in this direction, the further we get away from this base, here's your base, the further we get away from the base, the more apt we will be to diversify into those defensive assets. We prefer to pick up more bonds and gold, not when those boats are overcrowded, but when those assets are underloved in here. If we break down, then we will add to our defensive assets sooner rather than later. Given the fact that people generally see what they look for and hear what they listen for, it would have been very, very easy to watch last week's video. Some people might have said, 
the data is bearish. Some people might have said the data is bullish, and some might have said it's mixed. The correct answer last week, if you had a flexible, unbiased, and open mind, was that we had mixed probabilities. Mixed probabilities call for maximum flexibility and no ego. Forget what your last trade was. Do the right thing based on the data that you have in front of you. If we continue to do that, we should be in good shape regardless of whether we get a breakout to the upside in stocks or a shocking breakdown to the downside. As always, we'll head into next week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. It may also be worth a visit to the new website to see the FAQs. We've got new and expanded FAQs covering traditional investing, low-cost passive investing, and the online slash robo strategies that are currently in vogue. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.